Folks, their, their, objective, their objective is to show white nationalists that hate has consequences. One People's Project tracks extremists online, finds them, and confronts them. Take a look. They're here in Shelbysville, the neo-Nazis, the white supremacists that basically want to try to uproot what today's society is about. And we have a rule that uh, wherever they go, we go. One minute I'm going to be um, talking with them cordially, the next minute I'm probably punching them in that same mouth they're talking out. I mean, that's just the way it goes. I mean, the truth of the matter is I don't come to the rallies to, um, to dance that dance. Donald Trump, Donald Trump was elected because they had a candidate Donald on the Trump other side. Was a populist. He was elected <coughs> Donald Trump was a billionaire. How the hell could he be a populist? He was elected as a reasonable man who was going to bring peace. Sometimes they'll come to me to try to start sparring with me and try to start talking trash. And and a couple of times there, it will be a case of I'm the first black person they ever talked to. Wait a minute. Excuse me. So did mine. No. Probably been here longer than yours. No, mine has been here since the 1600s. Mine has been here since the 1600s too. Yes. Now ever since um, Trump got into the White House it's just been a full time job. And that's a shame because we don't make any money doing this. I did go on a leave of absence at, at my current job. And now I am uh, just doing this full time. Joining me now is Daryl Jenkins, Executive Director of One People's Project. Uh, Daryl, thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. First off, when you, when you hear critics say you are a violent organization, uh, you are just as bad as white nationalists, or as Donald Trump uh, said, bad people on both sides, or was that good people on both sides? <laughs> uh, how do you respond? I respond to them by saying, take a look at where the violence is really coming from. I mean, I was in Charlottesville. Those individuals that were there that were supposed to be holding a rally in defense of the Confederacy or the um, Robert E. Lee statue, they were the ones that were coming with the shields and the military formations and the clubs, and they were the ones that killed someone. The reason why Antifa was out there in the first place is because they'd been threatened in that town for about three months at that time. By that time, we came there to help defend the town. And now you see why. I mean, we have Richard Spencer running, um, holding, uh, I guess, speaking engagements in Gainesville, Florida, and his people are shooting at folks. So before you talk about any violence that comes from Antifa, which is actually self-defense, to be honest, you got to start looking at what is precipitating all of it. If you're going to leapfrog over that, you're not helping anyone. Uh, when you say Antifa is self-defense, yes, explain that. Well, basically. We are not going to engage in anything on an aggressive level unless, uh, uh, unless it comes our way. I've always had the attitude that you always let your, um, you always let the person you're battling with decide how this is going to go. That's what I was trying to make the point. That's the point I was trying to make in that uh, segment of mine when I said I will punch somebody in the mouth. It's either we are going to have a cordial discussion, you decide that, or <laughs> if you want to get aggressive towards me, I'll show you how it's done. We all will. That's how you have to act sometimes. I mean, I'm not sitting there advocating for violence. I'm not saying that you go out there and do things that you get you in more trouble than you should be getting into. But by the same token, you have to keep it in the forefront of your mind that these are bad people and they want to hurt you and they want to hurt you and yours. And they are trying everything to do so. How many times have they killed somebody over the past year alone? This, these are the kinds of people we deal with. Why do you do this? I mean, you said you, you took a leave of absence from your job, you do it full time. Why? No one else is. No one else is doing this. I've been doing this for 30 years on my own. One People's Project has been around since 2000. <laughs> and you don't see a lot of um, opposition, uh, aggressive opposition going towards f folks like neo-Nazis, white supremacists and, and the like. And they're, going, they're flying under the radar. I mean, we were the ones that covered Richard Spencer first. We covered him in 2006, or at least following him since 2006. This is a guy who was doing fundraisers for political candidates, trying to bring his politics into the beltway. If we weren't exposing him, he probably would have been a senator or a congressman or something <laughs> like that. And now we whittled him down to a carnival barker. His friend Stephen Miller, however, we didn't notice. And he's in the White House now. So. It's because we want people to know exactly who it is these people are so that when we see them coming, we tell them to go in the opposite direction. When you say you follow them around, mm -hmm. um, 
what do you do? I mean, in terms of, are you monitoring social media? Uh, and then when they announce there's going to be a rally, there's going to be uh, a, an event or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, that's when you say, pack it up, let's go? Indeed, all that and more. Sometimes we find out that they uh, get caught up with get in trouble with the law and we just sit in that courtroom and watch the court proceedings. That's how we gather information. We also try to let sure that the public knows whether or not they are their police officers, whether they're um, teachers or, as I mentioned earlier, their politicians. It's all about gathering information and informing the public. That's, that's what it is. The, they always say the pen is mightier than the sword and, I, and I, my vocation is journalism for that reason. So. <laughs> There are folks, somebody watching may say, this isn't Dr. King, this isn't Byron Rustin, this isn't nonviolence. This isn't, um, this, this it's is- It's Ida B. This, Wells. This is not the way to go. Yeah. And, and how would you respond? It's Ida B. Wells, this is what she did. This is who we get our inspiration from. That's why our uh, news line is called Ida Vox. But explain that for folks who don't know. Exactly, Ida B. Wells was someone, was a uh, journalist, um, black female journalist from the 1800s into the 1900s who wrote about the lynchings that were going on in Memphis, Tennessee, pretty much all the way up to Mississippi, when no one else was doing that, when no one else cared enough to do that. She was the one that put it out there so people can realize just how heinous the lynchings were and how devastating they were to the black community. So we basically are a latter-day version of the things that she was doing back then. And when people say that this is not Martin Luther King or anything like that, you're right, it's not. It's something that basically takes what Martin Luther King and I guess I do well. Is, is this, is this yeah. more, like, more like a deacon, deacon of defense? More or less. You, when you talk about Antifa, yes, you are talking about Deacon and Defense, but you're also talking about, um, there's also other Latter-day organizations like the Huey P. Newton Gun Club, they're out there too. And, uh, but I say it's more about, it's not about just going out there and busting skulls, because that's not really what One People's Project's focus is. Our focus is just basically trying to make sure that people know what's going on. We continue our conversation with Daryl Jenkins, Executive Director, One People's Project. Lauren. Oh, Daryl. So I was wondering your view of, you know, before Charlottesville blew up in, in August, I wrote two stories, just boilerplate stories on what was happening before that when they marched with torches, et cetera, right. for, uh, for NNPA Newswire. And I got the impression that the mayor of Charlottesville, Mike Signer, was kind of had this attitude like, let's not really talk about this. And I'm wondering your opinion on, do you feel like sometimes a lot of the white Democrats don't want to deal with the issue of racism because they have to acknowledge white racism? I think they're, <laughs> they're part, I think they're the major reason why we have so many problems dealing with this issue. I mean, we know what conservatives are all about. I mean, they're, they're pretty much the most dishonest when it comes to the race issue to begin with. But when it comes to um, your more liberal Democrats, especially your white liberal Democrats, mm -hmm. it's always about trying not to rock the boat, trying not to uproot the things that they have established. And when the race issue comes in, when these characters come in and we have to deal with them, they're doing everything they can to keep that from happening because they know that this basically brings it home to them. and. That's one of the reasons why I always try to tell people, look, you can't keep telling us, Antifa, or anybody fighting racism, what not to do. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not doing anything, <laughs> we're not listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> Malik? So um, you, you're, you're clearly somewhere from the Philadelphia area because you, you sound like me. It's, uh, <laughs> it, so as a, as a black conservative, I will say that, you know, we do confront race issues, and that's one of the things that um, I'm very adamant about even locally. Uh, but yeah, a as I talk to you, you can catch these hands too if you're taking <laughs> it in a different direction. But what you're doing is you're lifting the mattress of America because there's a lot of junk that we've thrown under the bed and tried to declare the room clean, right? And so as you've done that, what's next? I mean, you're confronting them on the streets, but what needs to happen in the halls of power to make sure that we eradicate this issue or at least address it appropriately. But to be perfectly honest with you, I think that's going to depend on the community. That's going to depend on what we all do as a people. Like my attitude is uh, midterm elections, um, those state legislatures that we're talking about that are coming up for um, coming up for election next year, 
I think it's not just a party shift that we need to see next year. I think we need to see a demographic shift mm. as well. Everybody that has been attacked over the past 18 months, whether you're black, Hispanic, Jewish, Muslim, we better start seeing everybody coming out um, and not just to vote, to run. Right. Scott Walker's um, term, he's running for a third term next year in Wisconsin. Maybe we should have a governor that will speak more to the people of Wisconsin than Scott Walker. You know, I mean, I mean, that's just an example. But we saw what happened in election, election day. We saw people of the certain demographics who were being attacked um, saying, we'll take your job. And that's, I, and that's I what we need to do next. 35 seconds, go. And Tifa on college campuses, uh, we saw what happened at Berkeley. Uh, we're seeing that, uh, you know, conservative speakers are being shut down. Um, part of the bad rep is what is going on in these college campuses with Antifa. Do you come on. own it? Or you got to come on. You got to come on. I got about 15 seconds. Go. My attitude is those conservative commentators are trying to shut everybody down, and we need to show them that you're not going to do that. All right. Daryl Jenkins, we appreciate it. Thanks so much. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't going to cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.